Hello students and welcome to this calculus video. In this video, we're going to continue working with optimization. We have two examples here. So let's get started. So as I'm looking at this problem, we have a solid form by adjoining two hemispheres. So a full sphere, cut that in half, put it at the top and bottom of a cylinder. And um, we had the total volume of the cylinder is going to be 12 cubic centimeters. Find the radius of the cylinder that produces the minimum surface area. Okay, let me draw a picture real quick. And there's kind of my picture right there. So we have a, uh, a cylinder and then at the top and the bottom we have like these half balls right there. So we want to figure out, okay, what is the radius that is going to maximize or to minimize the surface area. So we need to do a couple things because we have volume and surface area. So let's think of a sphere first. So what is the volume of a sphere? So let's label this as sphere information. So volume of a sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Okay, and now let's think about a, a cylinder. So a cylinder volume is going to be pi r squared, because so, you had a circle times the height, so times height. So then that's going to be pi r squared times height. And then um, what, is the, what is the surface area going to be? So then you have the circles at the top and the bottom, but we're actually not going to be using those because you know, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we take that out because, so we have pi r squared, that's a circle, we have two of those. So two pi r squared, I'm gonna finish my thought in just a second, trust me. So we have two pi r squared, and then we have two pi r h. So plus two pi r h. All right, so that gets us the entire cylinder, but we, the surface area of the top and the bottom, so let me mark it, the top and, the bottom of cylinder, we're, we're taking that out because it's covered by these hemispheres. So we actually don't need the two circles. So we don't need the two pi r squared, just the two pi r h. All right, so now that we've kind of figured out some stuff is we wanna start to write, all right, we want the minimum surface area. So I need to combine my surface area formulas. So let's write here area equals um, surface area of the sphere. So that's going to be 4 pi r squared plus uh, surface area of the, the cylinder part, the outer part. So that's plus 2 pi r h. And then this is where I notice I have r and I have h. So I need to find some sort of way to relate um, an additional equation here. So then that's where I'm going to get the area, or sorry, the volume. So let me write here volume. And we know it's going to be 12. So I'll write that here. We'll figure that out in a second. So we're going to add the two volumes. So 4 thirds pi r cubed plus pi r squared h. Okay, so there we go. And what I want to do is solve for h so I can substitute it back into my area equation above. All right, what I can do is substitute or factor out a, actually no, let's just subtract the 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 12 minus 4 thirds pi r cubed plus or equals pi r squared h and then divide everything by pi r squared. So, Let's see, what would be the easiest way to do this? Well, let me get rid of this three in the denominator. Um, so I'm gonna get 36 minus four pi r cubed equals three pi r squared h. And then now it'd be a little bit easier just to divide out by the three pi r squared. So then divide that by three pi r squared and that's going to get me just the H. I know it's a little bit wonky right there, but you know, you get the work, you get the idea of what I'm trying to do there. So I've solved for H and now I'm going to make that substitution into my area. So I'm going to say, all right, area equals four pi R squared plus two pi R. And now H is 36 minus four pi R cubed over three pi R squared. Now, what do I want to do? So I want to eliminate, I want to divide out this R with one of these R's down here. Okay, so now I just divided by three pi R. 
and I also want to divide out this pi with this pi. So what I distribute, let me get this here, area is equal to four pi r squared plus, I'm gonna distribute the two across the numerator. So that's going to be 72 minus eight pi r cubed all over three r. So 72 over three r, and then this one over three r. All right, so now let's simplify as much as possible. So area equals four pi r squared plus 72, oh wait, uh, 72 divided by three. I can do that, that is going to be 24. So 24 over r, and then r cubed over r, so that's just gonna get me r squared, so minus eight thirds pi r squared all right so let's go with this and like we can take this derivative and i think some things would actually be a little bit easier to work with in the end if i just took the derivative here so let's go ahead and do that so a prime is going to be 8 pi r because you bring the two down you multiply um, this is r to the negative one so minus 24 over r squared because you subtract one from the exponent and then um, bring the two down, so 16 thirds pi r. All right, so let's set this equal to zero. I wanna get rid of these denominators, so I wanna multiply everything by uh, three and then r squared to create that common, den I'm gonna just multiply everything by the three first. So I'm gonna get 24 pi r minus uh, 72 over r squared minus 16 pi r equals zero. And then let me bring it up here because we're still solving for this. I know this is what I was saying. This is gonna be a lot of algebra work. So then um, what do I see now? So I wanna get rid of the r squared. So I'll multiply everything by r squared. So 25, 24 pi r cubed minus 72 minus 16 pi cubed equals zero. All right, so let's solve, all right, I forgot an r there, r, pi r cubed, there we go. Um, so let's combine these now. So 24 minus 16 is going to get me eight pi r cubed. And then let's bring the 72, so let's add it across to the zero, so it equals 72. So now uh, let's continue solving for r. So I can divide this by eight. So pi r cubed 72 divided by eight is going to get me nine. And I can divide this by pi. So r cubed equals nine over pi. And then I can take the cube root of that. So r equals the cube root of nine over pi. That was a lot. And let me also tell you, um, I don't really need you to whip out your calculators. Let me just tell you that this is approximately 1.42. We're going to kind of just estimate that because I want to say, okay, we're going to use this. We figured out the length of the radius, right? We figured out a value, cube root of nine over pi. But we have to say why we know that this is, um, we want to know if this is a maximum. We want to say, okay, why is this, the minimum. How do we know that this is the minimum? So that's where we're going to use our sign chart. So I'm going to make a sign chart here and uh, we're going from zero to the cube root of nine over pi right here. And we're using um, a prime. And I think it would probably be easiest to kind of say this one, eight pi r. I'm going to rewrite this equation, eight pi r cubed minus 72 equals zero. And I could actually just say uh, pi r cubed minus nine equals zero. That would probably be the easiest one to use. All right, so let's use a value less than 1.42. All right, so in this case, I'm going to be using one. So pi times one cubed minus nine, that's going to be negative. And then let's use 10. So 10 cubed times pi minus nine, that's going to be a positive and this is again representing a prime so we know that this is minimized it's a minimum because a prime changes from negative to positive so make sure that we state that we know that r at 
the cube root of nine over pi is a minimum because a prime changes from negative to positive. When we have our analysis um, and we have to still write it out. That, that right there is not enough. You still need to write it out that it's changing from negative to positive. The derivative is changing. Now I know that this one was a giant problem, but be thankful that our next example here is not going to be as bad, okay? And this is probably gonna be a little bit more intuitive to what we wanna do. So we have profit and for the company spending versus the advertisements. So find the amount of money the company should spend on advertising in order to yield a maximum. All right, well we have something that relates the profit and the advertisements already. We have P, so we need to start by finding P prime. So then that's gonna be negative 3 tenths S squared plus 12 S plus zero, okay? And we're gonna set this equal to zero. So uh, what can I factor out of here? Well, I can factor out, factor out an S, and then I'm left with negative 3 tenths S plus 12 equals zero. So I could say S equals zero, um, and we could say S equals, so we could subtract 12, and so then let's go, let's actually write this out, because it's gonna be a little bit more. Um, negative three tenths S equals negative 12, so then the negatives are gone. Um, multiply that by 10, so three S equals 120, so S equals 40. All right, so I'm gonna throw out the zero right now because we know we're gonna have to spend some money on advertisement. So we're not gonna spend no money. Obviously that would help maximize profit if we spent absolutely no money on advertisement. But let's see what the 40 gets us. So I'm gonna come make a sign chart from zero to uh, 40. And let's see what we, that we're, we're showing that that is a maximum amount of profit because we're trying to maximize using the derivative p prime. So if I choose a value, let's choose one. I'm gonna get negative 3 tenths plus 12. So then that's a fraction plus 12. So then that's definitely gonna be positive. And then let's do a large number like 100. So I'm gonna get negative, um, so 100 squared, that's gonna be big. So negative 3 tenths times 100 plus 12 times 100, so then that's gonna be 1200. Well, that subtraction isn't gonna work out, so then that's still gonna be negative. So now we know that since P prime changes from positive to negative at S equal to $40,000, because it is in thousands of dollars, profits will be maximized. and. Like I promised you, this problem is quite short because, uh, you know, we were already given the information. This is still an optimization problem. But notice here, the wording is just like maximize, minimize. You're thinking maximums and minimums. We already know how to do that kind of work. So if we're already given a formula, if we're already given an equation that we can work with, we know that we can actually find that information based off of the current work that we did before this. So this isn't really anything new, it's just applications, very real applications, real world applications of what you can do in your lives now. Of course, um, I know example five is a bit of a beast to work with, so go through it slowly. Make sure you watch the video a couple of times if you're not getting everything right on certain parts. Hopefully I did explain everything correctly in both of these problems five and six. Um, and in our next video, we have one more video where we go over problems seven and eight so stay with it of course if you need help on any of these problems feel free to reach out to me in the comments or in an email i'm mr hernandez and this is mr hernandez teaches